none of us are medical professionals, none of you are medical professions. Uh, let, let's, let's say Sharon, what, um, what do you think managers can do to, to spot early signs and, and how do you think they should be addressing those with people? Okay, I, I, I think this is a really interesting subject and, and, and thank you for that, that opening, Jonathan. Um, I think that's really helpful. I, I think the, the, the whole thing about stress and pressure and difficulties at work seems to be, seems to be getting bigger. Yeah. Um, we've also seen an increase, haven't we, in, in terms of um, identifying young people now and children who are stressed, under pressure and having mental health problem, um, difficulties. Um, I think in terms of recognising it, you, you will probably, or, or most of you in the room, at some stage feel the effects of that pressure that doesn't seem to come off. Um, and the anxieties or feeling low or, or, or whatever, you'll probably experience some of those or, or people around you any one time. So I think, I think for a manager, I think it's about know your people and understand your people. If you know your people, you will know when there is a change of behaviour. You will know when something seems to be different. You will know when their work is being affected. Yeah? If you don't know your people, you won't know and be able to identify that change in behaviour. And it's that change in behaviour, isn't it? For most people, you will see signs. But every single person, um, a mental health difficulty is likely to manifest in different ways. So I could give you a very long list. Or you could go on the interweb, can't you? Dr Google. And you could find a very, very long list of what is somebody likely to be experiencing and how will you be able to identify that? The concern about that is that you'll then start looking for it. You will then start to apply a label and your behaviour may change. My advice is get to know your people and get to understand what makes them tick and where they are at any one time. Have that regular communication. If you don't have regular communication, then you know, where, where, do, where do you start? Because you're dealing with someone that you don't understand, you don't understand what impacts and, and, and affects them, and therefore you don't understand how to make any changes that might be relevant. So that, 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 that's the key thing for me, is really know and understand your people and be able to spot when those behaviour changes um, occur. So quality of relationships, yeah, quality of communication. And, and, and Fiona, <laughs> when do you think that normal normal workplace stress, and we all recognise that stress isn't necessarily a negative thing um, at all. So when does normal workplace stress become a mental health issue? Uh, it's just, just really want to put you on the spot. Yes, there. I'm not talking to um, <laughs> Which is a good answer to yeah, start with. I mean, it's, it's, it's about, I think I absolutely echo what Sharon has said in terms of that will be different for different people. Yeah. Okay. You know, and workplace stress doesn't necessarily lead to a mental health disorder. Yeah. Workplace stress can help people perform. You, you if you if you're a professional sportsman, you need that stress mm -hmm. to be able to perform. It doesn't necessarily, but it can lead to mental health disorder. But